If you haven't watched this, if you don't know what we do, welcome. Hi. This is our podcast, Hi. Irritable Dad Syndrome. We're, mm -hmm. we're both dads. We're irritable. Yes. We have multiple syndromes. Mm. This is another fun aspect of our show is yeah. there's a lot of watching us get our crap together. <laughs> million dollars in crypto. Tom, how did you fall for that? I mean, even Gronk was like, me know that not real money. Like, Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome. It's crunchy on the outside and creamy in the center. Here are your hosts, Mike and Darren. Hi, I'm Darren. I'm Mike. Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome. This is episode 205. We are Cincinnati's <laughs> comedy podcast. We have all kinds of fun things planned. We do. In theory. Mm -hmm. I'm looking them up right now. Yeah. I don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the things I want to talk about tonight is Unfrosted. That's right. I'm going to talk about the Jerry Seinfeld Pop-Tart movie, and I loved it. That's the Pop-Tart movie. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that in the rundown. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we start, while Mike is looking up things, <laughs> while Mike is preparing, I owe the folks at Bob and Tom Show an apology. Many years ago, I used to work with a guy, and we were going on a on a shoot. We were loading up gear, and we were at the elevator, and he asked me, he said, are you brand loyal? Do you only ride Otis elevators? And I thought that was the funniest thing mm -hmm. that I'd ever heard. Mm -hmm. And he said that if it's not an Otis, he takes the stairs. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I asked him, I said, can I use that on my podcast? And he says, absolutely. So I started writing commercials for Otis elevators, uh, being brand loyal. And if it's yeah. not an Otis, you should take the stairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, last week, I'm driving Cameron to school, yeah. and on the way home, I turned on the Bob and Tom show, and I heard Tom say that, that he was brand loyal, he only rides Otis elevators, and if it's not an Otis, he takes the steps. And I thought, son of a bitch, he stole that line. Yeah, Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be. I yeah. And I was like, the, 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 I can't even fathom them, A, listening to this podcast, B, stealing from this podcast. So you think so maybe reached, this guy heard that on their show. Yes, I and... reached out to my friend, and I said... Years ago, when we worked together, uh -huh. I you had said that, and he says, "Oh yeah, I, I heard that on the Bob and Tom show." Oh boy! So all mm. this time, we mm. have been stealing an Otis Elevator bit from the Bob and Tom show, and I want them. I doubt seriously anybody from Bob and Tom listens to this podcast. You if should they, report us. If anybody they, listening now should <laughs> report us to the Bob and Tom show. Get them to talk about us. If they do, I just want you to know I am sorry. It was unintentional. I did not mean to steal that. From you. If there's anybody who knew that that was something that was heard on the Bob and Tom show and thought that I had stolen that, yeah. I apologize to you. So, and I'm telling you right now yeah. that we're not going to do that anymore. Okay. I yeah. feel like crap because, I mean, it's like I, you know, wrote, uh, I try to write my own material. Yeah. So here's what you do. Yeah. Uh, go to bobandtom.com. Right. And there's a contact thing yes. email them uh -huh. tell them that mike and darren intentionally no, no, stole no 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 their no, otis no, elevator no, bit no, no. and uh, <laughs> are making millions off of it <laughs> and that they should have uh they should go to yeah. irritable dad syndrome.com mm -hmm. that to logic complaint www world wide web world wide web dot irritable dad syndrome.com yep. yeah uh, on facebook on the tiktok on uh, yep. uh, Instagram, yep. on exactly. X, like nobody yeah, comes yeah. to X. But no, I, I seriously, yeah. I was like, all the, my blood or my face just got all flushed. I'm mm. like, oh my God. Yeah. After all this time, we have been doing this thing on our show that they did probably 20 years ago. Yeah. And again, it was unintentional. I am sorry. And we're not going to steal uh, that material from you so, anymore. I came up with a line the other day, literally a few days ago. Yeah. And I thought it was the, the best line I've ever come up with. And I was excited to do it on the show, find a way to, to get it into the show. Mm -hmm. And I was scrolling through the, the stuff last night and I came across it. It's a Stephen Wright line. And I realized... <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I, I won a Nobel Peace Prize so much, I'd kill I'd for kill it. I'd kill for one, yeah. I, I was going to bring that to the show. Yeah. Like, yeah. dig me. It was going to be the, the title of an episode. Uh -huh. I was going to make it the video. It was going to be perfect. There was one time I'd said the perfect stocking stuffer was a cut-off foot. Yeah. yeah that, that was a Mitch Hedberg bit. Okay. Right? Mitch okay. Hedberg did I that one. Yeah. And then uh, when I do stand up, I used to do this bit where I said, hey, you you guys like impressions? And yeah. people say, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I do too. I think they're hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And then I would never do impressions. Uh -huh. And they yeah. thought that was funny. Brad Garrett from Everybody Loves Raymond, okay. back when he did stand up, did he, he did, yeah. you guys like impressions? Boy, I wish I knew some. Yeah. And then he, yeah. and I thought mine 
was close enough to his, even though mm-hmm. his was 20 years before mine, yeah. I, I stopped doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, because yeah. <laughs> I don't want people to think that I steal my stuff. Yeah. Did you, so, so as far as comedians stealing stuff, mm-hmm. have you seen, you've seen the Joe Rogan versus, is it Carlos Mencia? No, I don't know. What, no, I don't know look, what you're talking about. Oh my God. Go on YouTube and look that up. Okay. So I, I'm pretty sure it's Carlos Mencia mm-hmm. was known to steal jokes from other comedians. Okay. Uh, what's it? Mitzi? Mitzi at the comedy store? Yeah. Mitzi Shore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She so was Joe Polly Rogan, Shore's mom. Yeah. So Joe Rogan, is, is she really? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So Joe Rogan was like an up- Yeah. He, co- Polly was on Letterman and he was talking about how Dave used to babysit him. And Dave's like, I never yeah. babysat oh, you. See, Hughes is, Hughes is watching. It's uncomfortable. So- all these comics, uh, there's there's one uh, right now. I can't think of his name. He's uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of it. There's a few comics that are famous now. Uh, one of them's Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. that had some stuff stolen from him by Dennis Leary. The <laughs> song. I'm a- I know. I, I know the <laughs> song. He uh, he told that story on uh, Opie and Anthony. He was Dennis he had Leary a bit. stole that from yeah, Louis C.K. He had a bit, and he he didn't say anything about it for a long time because he said he was up and coming. Nobody knew who he was. He said, "Newsflash: I sucked when I was starting out. Right? I had hair, and something about that makes you not funny, mm-hmm. and it was horrible." And he <laughs> said, "The one bit that I had that would really kill, and I would close out every night was, you know, everybody's worried about offending people. What if you had a guy that just didn't give it?" <laughs> Mm-hmm. And just did whatever he wanted to. And yeah. he it, embraced being a... Yeah. And he just started naming off the things. I park in handicapped spaces. I, the, basically the song. And he came off the stage. Uh-huh. And Dennis Leary was like the guy that had kind of given him his leg up. In the, in the Like given him some okay. opportunities yeah. to, to be seen. Yeah. And he said, Dennis was like, man, that was a really good bit. That was really funny. That's really awesome. Do you mind if I, you know, he started riffing on it. He started coming up with different things for it. And Louis was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's great. And he said the next time, the next night or the next time he was there, mm-hmm. Dennis Leary goes up and just starts saying, hey, what if there was a guy that embraced this and basically did his bit? Well, it and sounds he, like Louis gave him permission. Wait, or that Dennis no, no, would... he, yeah, that's a, that's a gray area. Like okay. you know, Dennis was asking if he could riff on it a little bit, right? And Louis said, "Yeah," but he didn't think he was just going to do his bit, start to finish. Yeah. yeah. So you look it up on Bob and Tom, or, okay. or I'm sorry, Open Anthony. Okay. Dennis or uh, uh, Louis Louis, Louis C.K. C.K. goes through the whole thing. But anyway, back to Carlos Mencia, he would do the same thing with with younger comics, mm-hmm. and they couldn't do anything about it because they were afraid I'm going to get. You know, right. Fun fact, it's hard to be a comedian. Right. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, everybody who has a voice and feet and a hand to hold a microphone mm-hmm. thinks they're hilarious. Yeah. But not everyone is. I have absolutely no idea if anybody has stolen any of my material or not. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, whenever I would do stand up, there would be five or six or more other guys on there. Yeah. And they could totally be doing because. I don't go to yeah. clubs th- three or four times a week and follow anybody yeah, yeah. to see if they do. People used to steal my jokes on Twitter all the time. Okay. Like repost it or they literally would just, just word for word, what take what I said and then post it as their tweet. Yeah. 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 And you could, uh, there was a website called uh, who's stealing my, is it anyway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, you could. I can't remember what it was. Who's stealing my tweets? Dot com or something. Yeah. But yeah, there was this guy who every day would take two or three of my tweets and just write them as his own. Uh huh. So well, and, and I just wanted to like, our, you know, you know, I'm not making any money off of this, and you're not making any money off of yeah. this. Well, apparently, the story with with Carlos Mencia mm-hmm. is that Joe Rogan went to Mitzi and said, "Hey, this guy's." taking our jokes yeah and she was like well it sounds kind of like uh, and she wasn't really doing anything so there and this is on youtube you can go watch it okay he gets up on stage while carlos mencia is on stage with mm-hmm. his own microphone and says why you literally just stole that joke that guy and he points to a comedian that's out there and the thing he's like mm-hmm. that guy just said that that joke last night i saw him in a different club he said exactly what you said yeah and i've never heard you say it before and they get in this argument back and forth it goes on for a long time yeah and and uh, mencia has been on multiple podcasts and shows afterwards mm-hmm. talking about that. But do you ever notice how Carlos Mencia just kind of dropped off the face of the earth? So say, I haven't heard from him in years. Yeah, it, that was it. That was the event. Uh, I Well, I don't mean to, and this may not be true, but I heard Robin Williams used to steal a lot of people's stuff. I've heard that as when well. I, was, uh, yeah. I almost said when I was coming up, like I used to be a new comic yeah. and now I'm an yeah. established you, comic. You and Billy Crystal yeah. were having this conversation <laughs> in the back. Whoopi. You know, no, but it was to talk about it was it. years ago, many, many, many years ago when I was uh, I was doing 
a company at a place in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys who was headlining that night there was talking, and he was talking about uh, Robin Williams stealing people's stuff right and left. I had never seen yeah. Robin Williams do somebody else's. Uh, but I heard yeah. that many, many times, the, and he's he's gone, and I love Robin Williams. Oh yeah, and I don't mean to drag his name through the mud, but he's one of the people no, I heard. Let, used to let do me that. pull it. You're not dragging him through the mud. I think part of the the thing with Robin Williams is he was a master of improv comedy. He could walk out on stage, yes, yes. and have nothing and fill an hour, yeah. just talking about people in the audience and stuff. Yeah. And because I saw this as an explanation for why he may have accidentally repurposed jokes. It's flown around in his head, right? And he just he thinks it uh, because right. it happens to. Uh, they were this was on I forget which podcast I was watching this on, but they mm-hmm. were talking about how I was going to do the Stephen Wright thing, right? I'd heard it from him. I didn't realize I'd heard it from him. Yeah, but you know, and then you go on the all far opposite. I did not know this, but uh, George Carlin planned meticulously down to the syllable yes his act yes like he the inflection the volume mm-hmm. which character he's doing each yes. step and if it wasn't perfect yes he'd lose it on himself he was absolutely a it, word connoisseur yeah it was perfectly yeah. yes so now he, he didn't riff he didn't yeah. just go off the cuff so he's not going to accidentally grab something but i right. i almost look at robin williams as like a a lovable puppy just running through the house and yeah. just like, every once in a while it's going to it's going to do something, you know. I don't remember the comic's name, but I have a friend, Tara, and she is really good friends with the stand up comedian who used to write for Louis Anderson and he would open up for Louis Anderson. And I'm then, drunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want beats. <laughs> ah. Some nights, if when Louis would headline like a club or whatever, if he was unavailable, he would step in and fill in for Louis. Yeah. So I had asked her if she would cuz i wanted to know if a lot of if if some of my jokes had any merit mm-hmm. and i wanted to have a professional comic look and mm-hmm. she says oh he won't look at your stuff at all yeah he would yeah. not and and i said well that's i, mean, I wonder why and she said he is not going to look at your material because he doesn't want to see something, get inspired and yeah. then write something that sounds kind of like something that you said i said oh, okay yeah. i can appreciate that yeah, yeah, there was a, I, I, in this whole conversation, there was a, mm-hmm. there was another comedian that was like, I, it might have been George Carlin who would not watch other comedians, right, for fear that that would, yeah, you know, permeate and yeah, it yeah. was kind of like Johnny Depp. We've talked about him before. He won't watch his own movies, no, which I can kind of understand. Yeah, I don't know if you know this. I'm not Johnny Depp. No, no, you're not. But. <laughs> you know, I did notice that when I came in the, yeah. tonight. I was yeah, like, yeah. hey, wait a minute, yeah. you're. Not Johnny Depp. But, so I, for a long period of time, did not listen to the podcast. When you started editing, you took over soul editing things because mm-hmm. I was terrified. Oh, my <laughs> I God. I still don't understand I that. I say but... so many stupid things. Yeah. He's going to leave them in there, and I'm going to look like an idiot, and right. I can't I can't do it. Look up the Joe Rogan-Carlos Mencia thing, because yeah. besides the actual video of him confronting Carlos live in front of an audience mm-hmm. is all the aftermath. Now we're years later. I think... The last response that Carlos had on it was just last year. I watched him on a podcast. Yeah. And he is a he's a broken dude. Yeah. You can tell a broken dude because he keeps saying <laughs> throughout the entire podcast, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, yeah. I'm good now. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. And it's like, uh, that's exactly what a not good person says. I will admit, I did stand up a year or so ago, and I did just a bunch of uh, what you call one-liners. Kind of in the style of Mitch Hedberg or in the style of Stephen Wright. Yeah. And so I had written 12, 14. I can't remember how many jokes were in this five-minute bit. And of all the ones that I wrote, one of them was written by my friend Steve Farrell, and another one was written by my friend Stephen Hubbard. Okay. okay? And I had asked both of them, can I use this joke yeah. in my bit? And they both said, totally fine. The one I uh, did from Steve Hubbard said, I will never get tattoos on my knuckles, especially ones that say coal and slaw. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm like, yeah. and, and it got a big laugh. Yeah. And when I did my set, and then I went to the back of the club, and uh, everyone else was finished. After the night was over with, a lot of the comics will stand around the door, kind of. I'm just kind of just standing here waiting to leave, hoping someone will walk by and say, "Hey, you know, yeah, I liked yeah, your yeah, thing." Yeah, yeah. This girl walks up to me. She goes, "Go slow, <laughs> right?" And I was like, "Okay, that's wow, that's awesome." Okay, the. <laughs> The one joke <laughs> that somebody <laughs> called me out on or that, that they liked, I, I didn't write that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just like after that, I was just like, I'm not going to use any yeah, else's yeah. material. Again, yeah. so my apologies to Bob and Tom. 
I always, I mean, we we don't go see comedians very often at the local comedy place in Liberty. But when we do, the, I think the last time we went, there was an opener that we thought was hilarious. I cannot remember his name. Yeah. But he was, he took to the stage naturally. He had yeah. like a command of the stage. Yeah. Seemed like a dude that like, if you came up to him afterwards, he would be all over you, just like talking your ears up and yeah. everything. And I, we passed by him at the end. And I just pointed, I was like, man, that was awesome. And he was like the most meek and humble guy. He's like, oh, really? Really? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Like, I was like, I, I didn't expect that. I expected mm-hmm. to be like, damn, damn, it was awesome. You know, he had like this different persona on stage. Yeah. But when he came down, he was like, I yeah. felt like, I, I felt like giving him a hug. Yeah. I said, dude. <laughs> I'll buy you a beer. You I know, all right? It's, it's like some, <laughs> okay? of the, some of the comics I've met over the years were uh, a little full of themselves, uh-huh. right? But hey, you know what? They had confidence. Yeah, yeah. They had a ton of confidence. You have to and to God, get up there. Yes. Yeah. And God loved them. Uh-huh. I mean, because, God, there are some comedians that I'm just like kind of jealous. Mm-hmm. Like, they just, they really have way more confidence than yeah. I do, and it shows. And then yeah. there are some who are really meek and just, they don't get it. And they're surprisingly like, how are you that funny? But maybe yeah. it's that nervous energy that makes them that funny. I don't know. But I don't know. I but it is not I mean, I haven't done it, but just from the experiences that I've had in public speaking mm-hmm. and the little bit of exposure from this, um, I'm amazed at I'll Nate Bargazzi. Bargazzi. Oh god. So if you don't know Actually, any, it's it's Bargetzi. Bargetzi. Yeah. It looks like I mean, I could see somebody saying, Oh, he's just walking up on stage and he's talking yeah. about stuff. Yeah. Well, yes, that's Fun fact, that's what comedy is. It's right. walking up on stage and talking about stuff. He seems like just the guy next door complaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he was talking about watching the neighbor's kid, and he's like, this guy let a bobcat loose in my house. It's one of the funniest lines I've ever heard from him. <laughs> yeah. And just the way he says it. But mm-hmm. you, to be able to get up there and say that yeah. and deliver it the way he does in like a folksy way, mm-hmm. it's hard to be folksy when there's like 10,000 people who are staring at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you you literally know what I mean. Well, because I've you, never you, had that many people. But you've been up on a, on a stage. like right. so, so I've seen you on stage, and I've seen you crack jokes in crowds of people. Right. And there's it's a little bit different tinge to Darren. I can tell... I can tell that there's a little bit of tension there. I don't know if everybody can tell, but I can see a little bit like you're like there's more skin in the game. If you'd make Chris Michael laugh or not, who gives a <laughs> shit? It's, you know what I mean? What's he going to do? Take his grill and go home? But but if you, we but live, if you I live next door to her, yeah, so yeah. But if you say something, you yeah. know, in in like a stage, and it's like crickets, it's mm-hmm. like. Oh yeah, oh that's yeah okay. No, and you, it can affect the next joke. You saw me the night that I had my first paid yeah comedy gig. Yeah, you yeah. did great. It was sold out. Yeah, yeah, right. My name was on the thing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my god, my name is on the the yeah. sheet of paper. This guy, this guy, this guy, and Darren Cox. Yeah, I didn't even care that I was at the very yeah. bottom. I didn't care that I was going on first. So yeah, the first time I got paid, it was sold out, and it's still one of the greatest nights of my life. Yeah, yeah. And I'll never forget the. It, it, it was a lot of laughs when mm-hmm. I did the joke about the remote control. Marriage changes people. Um, like, you know, when I was a single guy, I used to keep my remote control on the coffee table. And now that I'm a married guy, I keep my remote control in a basket on the coffee table. <laughs> because apparently, I needed to stop living like an animal. <laughs> and then I was just like, I, I wanted to just stand there and just, just but then I had to keep yeah. going. Yeah, you gotta say something else. You're gonna be thanks. Good night. I had two more minutes, three or something like that. Yeah, and it was amazing. Is I mean, you could do an Andy Kaufman and literally just leave right after that, or I could have done an Andy Kaufman and just stand there for the rest of the time. You know, thanks. Thank you very much. And after that night, this friend of mine, he came up to me and he looked at me and he's like trying to say the words, and I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I didn't know you had it in you. I didn't know you had that in you. And I was like, cool. So it's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive because it like I said, well, some, I, I, some I hope nights, you took that the right way. It's one thing to like deliver a joke mm-hmm. to to Chris Hughes standing in front of him. No, you're exactly right. It's another if there's like a sea of Chris Hughes. First of all, right. if you're in front of a sea of Chris Hughes. Best audiences you can get. Yeah. It is. But watch your back. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You're listening to Irritable Dad Syndrome, Cincinnati's comedy podcast. Ah, waka waka waka. That is, without question, the funniest story I've ever heard. We'd like to welcome our Dayton viewers. Yeah. 
<laughs> we haven't been, we on, so we haven't been on date. To, yeah, I know. We were so like, yeah. oh, we made it big time. We're on TV. We were on Dayton Public Access. We were literally Wayne's we're like World. Wayne and Garth. Yep. <laughs> and th- no matter how many times I asked, I'm like, has no. anybody uh, commented? No. What about <laughs> people who work at the thing? No. Yeah. What about the... What about the engineers? What about the yeah. guys who roll the tape? Uh-huh. I, I haven't talked. It, to it changes the way I swear. <laughs> when I read about when I read about somebody getting like doing something or whatever, I'm not impressed by people if they tell me they're on TV. It's like yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, or you know, like. Uh, but it was hilarious yeah. saying that we've been on public we've access. We've been on public TV. access, and we followed. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, remember, we, can't remember the guy at the show that we followed. The guy, I don't know oh, the guy that the horrible. news table that they threw yeah. rats at him or yeah. something. And then we taught mm-hmm. a, a college we class did. on podcasts, dude. I wonder if any of them do a podcast. I don't know. Remember that woman who was just feverishly taking notes? Yeah, she was I just, wanted to she's stop her. It's like writing down, wait, a lady. She's, we don't know what we're talking about. She was writing down everything. We, and, and what? What now? What's a Marvel close? A Marvel close is when you yeah. you finish a show and now, then you roll the yeah. credits, and then there's a little piece yeah. of, of oh, audio to the. Geez, yeah. How did you come up with that name? Well, the with Marvel we watch movies. the Marvel the, movies. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, each Marvel movie does it. The, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. and they're all connected. Yes, and, Jesus. What do you? And why? And why is it called a cold open? Well, that's a television term for when something just yeah. comes up just for the. In, in, uh-huh. She was the one who. Can I do a podcast about how much I hate my husband? <laughs> yeah, yes, you can. You sure can. And I'd listen uh, to that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there was a dude who's like, we, I'd do a podcast. I'm too. like, no. <laughs> You're in the right place then. But yeah, we taught a class on podcasting. Class. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we did. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> So if you're listening to this in, in the year of our Lord 2024, you know what we're talking about. But yeah. let's pretend that this has stood the test of time and yeah. somebody's listening to this in 2050 when yeah. we're in the old folks' home. They're like, well, what were these two old bastards <laughs> talking about back in the day? Back in 2024, uh-huh. you could accidentally have a pot. You could butt dial an app and make a podcast. Get 12 downloads. Especially with AI. You could have the art. You could yeah. you could yeah. have the podcast with 12 downloads yeah. before you know it. <laughs> I remember calling you when we had like ten downloads. Like, we're, we're, this is it. We had with ten people listen to us. Ten seriously? people, ten yeah. different people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, and who knows how many people were in the room when they were playing it? We're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna be millionaires. <laughs> like one guy was playing it for like there's seven people in his. So it's possible, possible. Yeah. So he yeah. that, that that means that there's like seventeen people oh, who listened. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to tell 17 people, and suddenly we're oh, an MLM of podcasts. Uh, yeah, and they're, it's going it's to gonna spread be, like wildfire. We're going to be like, on like Jimmy the, Kimmel like tomorrow. Monkey, monkey pox, yeah. I was waiting for the phone to ring. <laughs> we would get a download in California. I got a call from California. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel wants you know? us to come on the show yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the first negative comments. I'll tell you what, we're going to go on Bob and Tom. <laughs> we are, yeah. <laughs> we are one, t- one way or the other, we're going to talk to him, <laughs> either in court or on the show. I hope it's not in court. It would be funny. It'd be, come I on, don't guys. Think so we don't have any money. No, we don't. That's what's <laughs> funny about it. <laughs> we have got that dehumidifier. We, we'll sell that. <laughs> Put that on, on the yeah. eBay. We'll yeah. tell them it's a tribute. We've I, mentioned them more than they've mentioned us. They're getting free press from that, us. That is true. But I remember the first negative comment. I was like, well, "What's it going to be like when we get a negative a thousand comment? times?" I love it. I people, somebody getting mad at us for right. what we're talking about. So what was there was the first negative comment. Oh, what was it? it was oh, we to need you. to make somebody laugh within the first yes, ten minutes. We need to make somebody laugh within first, first two, two minutes. First yeah. two minutes. Someone yeah. needs to be guffawing. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then there's the guy who sent me the direct message. Why do I fart when I walk? Yeah, okay. And I said I don't know. And you're like, Darren's offering free medical okay. advice, Mister Two Minute Guy. Let me <laughs> let me reenact for you the first two minutes of ninety nine point nine nine percent of podcasts out there. Uh, is this on? Is it, is it, is it, is, yeah, hey, Carrie, hey, Carrie, are you are you connected? Yeah, we said. I think. Did you? What we, what, we, what, what? What? Are we doing that this what, week? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah, I can't. I can't. What's this button do? Fart. Where's it? All the all, oh, shit. fart. Fart. Okay. Uh, hello. Fart. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> hello. That's it. Ninety. Most of them. I know. I get podcasts recommended to me, and I yes. have to like. I just skip the first five minutes. It doesn't matter what it is. First five minutes, I skip, and I get most of them. It's like, okay, we're ready to start. We got our guest, uh, Felipe Film. Uh, uh, Felipe. Oh, they when did Fel- you start? We've, filming I've them? been trying to get Felipe yeah. on this show for months. And their audio is always screwed up. Is like, <laughs> 
was like, what am I listening to? <laughs> So I see that and I think, Uh we're going to be millionaires. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's going to listen to this thing. And we have words. Yeah. (laughs) They make sentences. I know. And they don't destroy your ears except what I just did. Well, I just assumed, like with with our podcast, we have an announcer. Hi, I'm Dave Lay. We have opening music. Hey, you want to touch my beats? We do. We've got commercial breaks, we even though some of them are stolen. <laughs> we have a website that one or two people visit a year. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. We have merch that people come yeah. and look at and, and go wild about. And, and they don't buy it. I'm going to yeah. wear. Listen. We've, we've had guests on this podcast. I'm going to wear. We've had people get married on this podcast. We have. I'm going to wear one of our shirts. Sort of. We're going to go see uh, Hootie and the, Hootie the, and the Blowfish. Stingrays yeah. and uh, <laughs> Collective Soul. I'm going to wear one of our shirts there. You'll have to I, let I me want borrow you to one. I want you to let me borrow one because I'll, I'll, I'll wear one. the other one. I want you to count how many people stop and say, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Let me, can I, does it work? Do they, and they pull out their stupid little phone mm-hmm. and they do the little QR code. Yeah. And then I get a little <laughs> bing. Somebody came to the website. And then I yeah. go look at the merch shop. Yeah. And yep, they looked at it and they walked away. Yeah. Just, <laughs> best shirt they've ever seen in their lives. <laughs> I know. In Vegas, I was in double digits of people coming up. Yeah. Drunk people. I was excited when the drunk people were excited. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's, he's oh, in drunk Vegas. Drunk people are going to do gonna, anything you want. accidentally buy it. Nope. I nope. bought four shirts and I had sex with one of them. <laughs> the dude in Florida bought one, though. Thank you, dude in Florida. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, what happened? Gone off the rails. We, we went way off the rails <laughs> down into the woods. Have you ever watched the Trailer Park Boys, the full series? No. You haven't seen where they... Okay, they were doing a drug ring, and they were running pot from Northern America through the board, Canadian border. Right. And um, Sebastian Bach was helping <laughs> them run this ring. Right. It was on a train. It was a model train on tracks going from Northern America Sebastian through, Bach. The, through the how, woods. How Sebastian, the mighty have fallen. Sebastian Bach would go out there and get the little bags of pot off the choo-choo train. Turned around from Skid Row, Sebastian Bach. <laughs> what, what's uh, happened to him? I uh, I used to watch that show in the background while I was doing other stuff. Yeah, and it was the one time I stared at it. I was like, Is "That Sebastian Bach." I was at a party. That's a toy train. Year two years ago, I was at a party, mm-hmm. and uh, a buddy of mine. Uh, I was talking to him, and he introduced me to some of his friends, and they started talking heavy metal music, and I'm. I know a little bit about heavy metal. You're down with the axes. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And so the question came up, what was the best hair ballad of all time? Every Rose Has a Thorn. No. Okay. No. I said, I sat, I pondered, and I said, I remember you, Skid Row. And they're like, oh. And they they were all like, drop the mic. And I was just like, you can't can't top that. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. And it is the best hair metal song of all time. This portion of Irritable Dead Syndrome is brought to you by Lotus Biscoff Cookies. Hi, I'm Dave Lay, and I love traveling. It seems like every couple of months I get the urge to visit people and places anywhere on this great planet. And that's why I'm a big fan of Lotus Biscoff Cookies. Whenever I'm flying and the stewardess asks if I want a snack, I say, Hell yeah, I want a snack, and make that snack a pack of Lotus Biscoff Cookies. Since 1932, Lotus Biscoff cookies have been made with all natural ingredients. They're crunchy, and that caramelized flavor has made them the preferred choice of every major airline that serves snacks. Lotus Biscoff cookies. Mmm, now those are some good cookies. Back to you guys in the studio. I want to talk about Unfrosted, and okay. then I want to talk about Pulp Fiction. Okay. okay before you do that, yeah. before you do that, okay. briefly, yeah. I'm going to put a call out for people. I want some ideas for something okay. for another project that we are going to work on. Okay. And I'm going to put the call out at the end of the episode. Okay. So if right now you're like, I'm sick of these old uh, bastards. I don't want to hear any more about what they're saying. We're not that Listen old. to the end. Yeah. Okay. Unfrosted. Yes. Jerry Seinfeld's directorial debut. Okay. Oh, about, he directed it. Yeah, he directed okay. it. Okay. That's why it's his directorial debut. <laughs> I thought it was debut. I thought it was French for his ass. I didn't know what. Hello. I didn't know what happened. Don't listen to the critics. The, okay. I've heard that the critics have aren't crazy about the movie. We laughed our butts off. Yeah. At this, and yeah, it's stupid. What's the style of it? Is it like uh, it's, it's, uh, waiting for Guffman? Like, it's set that? in the sixties. Yeah. And he works for Kellogg's. They catch wind that they're trying to develop a breakfast. Pastry. Okay. Okay. So they have a feeling they hear that post that 
cereal company is trying to steal their thunder uh-huh. and market a breakfast pastry before them. Uh-huh. So they compare it to the space race. Okay. <laughs> We've got to get our ship to the moon before the Russians. Uh-huh. Dean Norris is Whoa. the Russian the guy in Kellogg's. Yeah, yeah. Or the guy in post. He plays like the leader of Russia. Oh. They literally. Yes. Okay. Okay. And they go and talk to him because they need Russia to help them with their sugar supply because El Sucre from South America is uh, (laughs) fighting. If the only reason you watch it is for Bill Burr playing John F. Kennedy, (laughs) then you're totally fine. Just watch it and then fast forward to Bill Burr. No, he doesn't. Oh, yeah. Bill Burr is Kennedy and he is a fantastic (laughs) Kennedy. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> you all right no I mean, <laughs> hugh grant does, does he break into bill burr at all when he's being no, kennedy or does no, he but play I mean, you know he, yeah. he's got the uh he's got the boss hey, accent you, there you know yeah, so uh, you doing, uh, so i gotta... hear about declare this day pop tart day you know so he is fantastic as kennedy uh-huh. hugh yeah. grant Oh, I love you. Is is Tony the Tiger? He plays <laughs> he plays Thurl Ravencroft, and he's okay. like this Shakespearean trained actor who is so pissed. I saw a clip. Yeah. Is it yeah. him and uh, uh, what's her face, Melissa McCarthy? Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, Amy Schumer's in it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, you that like, was hilarious. That yeah. clip was hilarious. Yeah, like everybody is in this movie. Okay. And Jerry Seinfeld's like, I don't know why they in the. He called and said he wanted to be in the movie, so I put him in the movie. <laughs> you know, like, he is like this pissed off. Shakespearean trained actor uh-huh. who is just sunken so low to be playing it's this Tony's tiger, tiger. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. He's hilarious. Yeah. And there are cameos. Okay. There are so many is, cameos. Is Larry David, does he make a cameo? No. Oh. No. Hmm. No. Yeah. Okay. N- none of the Seinfeld people okay. uh, make a Not cameo. Elaine. You think Elaine would be in I know. there someplace. I know. Okay. But here's the thing. Yeah. Jerry Seinfeld is not a good actor. He's just not. <laughs> He's... And he doesn't care. No. <laughs> he just goes out and I'm just going to read my lines like this. <laughs> like, how yeah, come yeah. we're not no one's eating cereal yeah and it's like christian slater works for the milk company right <laughs> and christian slater and his guys are like uh, the mafia uh-huh. and they're pissed because kellogg's is making this product uh-huh. that doesn't need milk okay and so they're yeah, yeah. getting all heavy on the oh, kellogg's yeah. people yeah you know threatening them and everything i loved it <laughs> mom came over mom was laughing jacob yeah. and cameron cameron said i don't know how many times this is awesome because yeah. I told them, I said, we're going to watch the Pop-Tart movie. And they're like, okay. Yeah, I, I think yeah. they were thrilled because this movie doesn't involve animals eating yeah. somebody alive yeah, yeah, for yeah, a change yeah, of pace. Yeah. So, but yeah, the Unfrosted was great. You That's just got to awesome. watch it. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, a few weeks ago, I told you that Jacob and I, he wanted to watch Pulp Fiction. We watched it up until Neil Wallace has the overdose and he has to take <clears> the, yeah, he has to put yeah. the syringe straight through the chest cavity into her heart. Then we had to stop it because we both had things that we had to do. So we finally picked it back up. Let's yeah. finish Pulp Fiction. And we're sitting down and he had asked something about, he's like, boy, I'm glad we got past that, that one part. And I said, you know it gets worse, right? He goes, it does? I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. It gets much worse. Well, how does it get worse? I can't tell you. Yeah. And it did get much worse. And ooh, the cringing with the... With the The gimp? Yeah, with the gimp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at the pawn shop. Yeah. And Marcellus. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And... (laughs) <laughs> Here I am, his dad. Hmm. Well, I think I'm a pretty good dad. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching this with my son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we watch that, and then bitch, be cool like Fonzie. <laughs> yeah. You know the yeah. Uh, so, and he wasn't expecting at all the scene yeah. where Butch goes back to his apartment and finds Vincent yeah, yeah, in the yeah. bathroom. Oh yeah, bang bang bang. Yeah, and then he eats some uh, Pop Tarts. <laughs> and he's like, Get out of there. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? He's just yeah. standing there calmly eating these. Yeah, but yeah. those are toaster pastries. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. weren't brand yeah, name. Yeah. You'd think Quentin Tarantino could have afforded yeah. a little brand recognition yeah. and put some Kellogg's Pop Tarts yeah. in there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but Jacob loved it. He just awesome. he loved the movie, thought it was great. Yeah. And it brings up the question. All these years later, because they just had the whatever uh, anniversary of Shawshank. Uh-huh. And I told him, I said, because this year Jacob watched, uh, last year Jacob watched Shawshank. He had seen Forrest Gump. Okay. So at the Oscars that year, like the three big contenders were Pulp Fiction, Forrest Gump, and Shawshank Redemption. Cool. And looking back now, 
I still would have given Shawshank. the Academy Award to Shawshank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Screenplay, yeah, I would have given it to Pulp Fiction, mm. but I would have given Best Picture to Shawshank. Yeah, yeah. I think I still, everything in my being, believe that Shawshank was a better movie, start to finish, than all of them, mm -hmm. especially Forrest Gump. And I loved Forrest Gump. Yeah, they're all great movies. Yeah, yeah. If you, any, any of these things, if you look back uh, in the 90s in music, mm -hmm. Look back at the music that was up in 91. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the band that should not be named, their best album. You had Metallica Black album. Right. Uh, Pearl Jam 10. I mean, these, it's like, it's like see, Nirvana, Nevermind. They were all like, it's like they, these all came out the same year. The same, like yeah. the same, the summer. Good I was Lord. driving around listening to these. Yeah. Like in my head, that yeah. was over a 10 year period. But no, mm -hmm. it was like, here. Yeah. <laughs> Great like, year for music. There you go. Great year for movies. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This portion of our show is brought to you by Whopper's All Beef Footlong Hot Dogs, voted best hot dog for the seventh year in a row by the National Hot Dog and Sausage Association. Whoppers are made from 100% pure beef with no fillers and no preservatives. Get a ruler and measure it yourself. If your hot dog isn't a foot long, they'll refund your money, guaranteed. That's right! Now, back to the show. Right now, I'm reading the Game of Thrones series. Yeah, in uh, in book form. That's yeah, what that, that reading, reading is. means. Yeah, and I. S <laughs> oh, you mean you're not just reading the subtitles? <laughs> you're playing the series and reading the <laughs> yeah. subtitles. Yeah, it's taken me a long time <laughs> because I have to pause. I can't read that fast. Yeah, it's just really annoys everyone in the room. Yeah, I really wish that there was a version of Game of Thrones that I could buy. That's boobless. You know oh. what I mean. <laughs> I don't have a problem like, because I want to watch it with Andrew. I right. don't have a problem with the yeah. war. I want him yeah. to see yeah. the Battle of the Bastards yeah. in context. Yes, it's one thing because I, I looked up, you know, the, that that scene mm -hmm. on the interwebs, and it gives me chills yeah. when Jon Snow is pulling out the sword. They're racing toward him with the swords, mm -hmm. and it's like here we go. And he just goes. It's the four Frodo of Game of Thrones. It is, and it means something if you know the context of who the guy is that he's fighting and what's happened to him all the way through. But to get that context, you got to get through all those seasons and it's a beautiful, great show. Got boobs everywhere. everywhere. And I mean, Oppenheimer yeah. was very uncomfortable. I yeah. did not expect that was stealth boobs came in on Oppenheimer and like made, I was like, you didn't really need, you yeah. could just have a disclaimer, have, mm -hmm. um, who's the guy, uh, Morpheus or somebody come out, walk out and say, <laughs> uh, Oppenheimer was, a uh, uh, had multiple <clears throat> sexual flings. Right. Um, that was happening in the background. Yeah. Let's get back to the bomb. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you don't have to, yeah. you know, like, just have that version. <laughs> And well, I was reading as I'm reading. I, I remember these scenes in the show where there's boobs flying everywhere. Yep, they weren't in the book. Now there's a lot of sex in the book, not nearly as much as what's in the show. <sighs> Tyrion is Tyrion Lannister is getting it in like the first episode. Yes, that's the only episode we didn't watched happen with Jacob. Yeah, didn't happen <laughs> in the book. Did not happen in the book. Yeah, Jacob wanted to watch Game of Thrones, and Livy and I were like, yeah, we, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we were watching, and we we remembered. How violent a lot of it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then yeah, there's Tyrion Lannister to just bow, bow, oh, chow, yeah. wow, boom. Yeah, and there's like whole three, four, or five naked girls. Yeah, there's like, conversations between like these, you know, Varys and the different people that's mm -hmm. important to the plot, and somebody's banging somebody in the background, They're blurred out in the background, just like, <laughs> like don't, why don't, is that? Don't no. do that again. <laughs> Do not do that again, please. <laughs> just, Good I just, Lord. Just, I've just, got to wash my be, brain with bleach. There's got to be a version of it where they just, I'm not a prude. I just want to watch it with my kid. You I know understand. What I, mean? uh, <laughs> I, do, I do understand. We got so we got through Terminator, the first uh -huh. Terminator, because yeah. I knew what was coming. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, it's literally. <laughs> literally. It's, it's just like, oh, they're going to the hotel room. Okay. Uh, close your eyes. Fast yeah. forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What happened? You didn't. Do, they made a kid. They, 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 now we're back to Terminator <laughs> Land. You know, yeah. if we watch Titanic, I know there's a part where she's like, "Draw me like your French what people." What are your French horse? Yeah. What are they? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. And they, we, we will fast forward, and then boom, there's the old lady again. Yeah, and, and we're back to the boat sinking. Mm -hmm. I can't do that with Game of Thrones. No, randomly, you'll there'll be a dragon, yeah. like, <laughs> and then shooting, next thing you know, all of a sudden there's a boing, big, boing, yeah, there's boing. a there's it's like airplane. <laughs> a naked woman on the dragon. It's like why are you it's why like, are you on the dragon? It's like the movie Airplane. I want to watch it, but yes. there's that scene yeah. where everything's going crazy and the boing boing she boing just boing, runs boing. on there. What? I, what? <laughs> what happened? I wasn't expecting that no. at all. No. <laughs> 
This portion of Irritable Dad Syndrome is brought to you by Mr. Bubble, the bath time soap that makes getting clean as much fun as getting dirty. Now back to the show. We're recording this episode on May 7th. Yes. Okay, so two or three days ago, Libby and I took the boys out. We went to the Art Museum of Cincinnati. We took my mom to the Art Museum. Okay. I don't know if you've been to the Cincinnati Art Museum. Yes. It's really cool. Pretty cool. Okay. That's we the had, Hall of Justice. Uh, or no, that's the Science Museum. That's the No, that's the History Museum. History Museum. History okay. Museum is the Hall of Justice. Okay. So we went to the Cincinnati Art Museum. Okay. Had a great time. Yeah. The, the boys have learned from me that when we go through the modern art exhibit and when you see the painting that's solid yellow except uh, for the splotch of black in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are going on this thing. Well, it's a good thing there's the black in the middle because that differentiates yeah, yeah. man's look on life yeah. with the heart and the soul of the uh, the construction of the yeah, and they're they're trying to evaluate what this yeah. painting means yeah and then they finally just like who are we kidding it doesn't mean anything yeah so we got to the and if you're an art major and I'm pissing you off suck it I, because <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's there's the sections of the museum yeah. that I call the I can do that part of the museum. Yeah. If I can do it, it doesn't belong in the Cincinnati I, Museum of Art. So I, we went to the art museum. Ag- I agree. I, I understand yep. the spirit of why you're saying that. Yes. A yellow painting with uh-huh. a black splotch in the middle. Uh-huh. Come on. Yeah. Pac-Man. That's come Pac-Man. on. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. uh, come on. Yes. <laughs> so we did that. Yeah. And we uh, we went to lunch. And then later that night, it, it was Star Wars Day. Okay. okay. We went to this arcade. There's a place called Arcade Legacy. I don't know yeah, if you've been there. I've heard of it. Yeah. I haven't been there. Arcade Legacy is the bomb. It okay. had you can play Dig Dug. You can play No, you they didn't have Dig Dug. They had Well then uh, I'm not going if they, they don't have Dig they had Dug. Hubert, okay. Miss Pac-Man. My jam was Miss Pac-Man. Okay. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you pay five bucks for an hour. Okay. Psh, forget it. All, all these pinball games. Uh-huh. I still don't understand pinball. I've gotten into pinball lately. Yeah, it's like I liked pinball, but I mean, even the best player, there's no, you know, when the ball goes straight down, and you, you there's yeah. there's no stopping that. Yeah, yeah. So you could lose, and it'd be no fault of your own completely. Yeah. But we're at this arcade, and it's just awesome. There's a guy, and he is dressed like an X-Wing fighter pilot okay. from Star Wars. A Rebel yeah. Alliance, yeah. And I had to hold Libby back. Because I'm like, well, okay. get, she's married, dude. You're not taking my girl. All right. And he's just walking around all night. Hur, 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 hur. I'm an X Wing fighter pilot. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And I was going to say, because, you know, it's Star Wars Day. I don't know if you wore a Star Wars t shirt. No. I don't know I, if you told anybody, may the force be with you. Usually I do day. the required things of changing the, the thing on my Facebook to Millennium Falcon. Right, right. And I'll make a Wookiee joke. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, you, but I yeah. didn't do any of that stuff. Not I didn't do any of it. I didn't either. Just let it pass. And I didn't even, because you get a second chance, you get Revenge of the Fifth, Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Right after. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't do anything that day. Yeah. But honestly, Star Wars has just really lost a lot of its appeal for me. Yeah. And I hate to say that because growing up in the 70s, uh-huh. Star Wars was, I ate, slept, and, and breathed yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. All I wanted for Christmas, for my birthday, for anything, were the Star Wars figures, were yeah, the yeah. toys, okay? I couldn't get enough of the movies. I don't know how in the 70s I saw it three or four times at the theater, because we went to Bristol uh, to yeah. see it. We lived in Virginia. It took like, I don't know, 45 minutes to get to the theater. I don't know how I saw it so many times in the theater, yeah. but that's the only way you could see something over and over again, uh-huh. is you had to keep Go- going to the theater. Yeah. They didn't have VHS tapes back then. Yeah. And it was it's, like four bucks back then. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I saw th- that and Empire and uh, Return of the Jedi at all, at least two or three times in the theater. Yeah. And it was just it was just a huge part of my life. And now I'm just like, whatever. I didn't see Ahsoka. I, I didn't that, see no. the Rogue One spinoff TV show. I watched like two episodes. Yeah. And no one in, it in the It looked like it was going to be good. I, I fell out of the Marvel thing the yeah. same time I fell out of Star Wars. Yeah. It's just like. Yeah. And you know what? In the midst of the Marvel and Star Wars stuff, I thought, mm-hmm. this is going to go on forever. It's going to be awesome forever. Yeah. I hope it never dies down. And it didn't really. I just kind of like, I got tired of it. Yeah. It's like, I'm, you know. I know. I didn't mm-hmm. like Obi-Wan. The yeah. Mandalorian, I liked. Yeah. Uh, Boba Fett. But we haven't finished watching. The, I haven't watched the second season of, yeah. or whatever. One mm-hmm. of them ends with Luke coming in. Yeah. And then there's another season after yeah. that I haven't watched. Yet. Well, the, spoiler alert, the Boba Fett series. I could give a shit about until Mandalorian comes in. Then yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Because yeah. I dig the Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know what's, is it something with me? I don't know. They just, I think they just did too much too fast. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, I loved Star Wars, but I didn't like it as much as other things. 
I always got into the wrong thing at the wrong time. How so? Like, I when everybody was everybody kung went, fu fighting. Every <laughs> when everybody <laughs> went in video games. When everybody went Super Nintendo, I went Sega Genesis. And I know there's a whole Sega Genesis crowd and everything, but come on, you guys all wish you had a Super Nintendo. I was big into the GI Joe figures. I didn't like the Star Wars figures that much because they they couldn't bend. They let's let's all well be, they did. They, yeah, but let's let's. They didn't bend at the elbow. You're that's right. right. Let's be serious. The Star Wars figures kind of sucked, and the vehicles sucked because they had to make them for these characters. Yeah, I would put my GI Joe characters in my Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Did you ever watch the Toys That Made Us on Netflix? No, you've we've, you've talked about it. Oh, but, I, but I, I will say so good. I will say Star Wars toys related. I do remember the Christmas that I got the Ewok Village. Mm-hmm. I thought we were rich. Yeah. When that was under the, I was like, I did not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that we were this wealthy. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know that there were horses out here on our farm. <laughs> you know, we were just like smoking cigars and tossing dollar bills in the fireplace. Lighting them we, with a hundred dollar We bill. have the Ewok village, mm-hmm. which probably cost 20 bucks. But back in the <laughs> that 80s, was a lot that, of was, money. that was about a thousand dollars. Yeah. But I didn't, I liked the GI Joe. I liked the, the Genesis, when the when the Nintendo, I was supposed to be in the Super Nintendo. I I was always on the wrong side of things, like the cool thing. I mm-hmm. and it wasn't like I was being trying to be counterculture, and that I was really a cool one. It was just I was a, stupid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's I just, didn't know what I was it's doing. Just what you liked? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but yeah, Marvel. I never got into comic books. I the only ones I, I didn't really either. I did I read a few Spider Man. Mm-hmm. But I like there were there were like Looney Tunes comic books. Do you remember that? Like yeah. Bugs Bunny. I read all those. And television, yeah, and television was the uh, it was pretty that was pretty badass. Yeah, I had the Atari twenty six hundred. Atari twenty six hundred. Mm-hmm. I just learned how to connect all my old geezer stuff, the yeah. Commodore sixty four, and the old Nintendo to the computer upstairs to stream. Shut up. So I may on the uh, Rock Hardly yeah. start playing those old and. Oh games, man, like the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking like what's Grandpa playing right yeah. now? Well, my uh, friends, he found his 2600, mm-hmm. and then his wife still had her little itty bitty four by three TV set that she had in college. Oh yeah, and the 2600 hooked up to that TV still worked. Oh yeah, and the kids were losing their mind playing the Atari 2600. Oh yeah, Pong, Asteroids. Yeah, uh, d- uh, Pitfall. God, I could play Pitfall all day. Pitfall. I love playing. Did you, playing you, you can win Pitfall? No. You could beat it. You could. There is an end to Pitfall. I didn't know that. I didn't either. Yeah. I watched a guy do it on uh, on the YouTubes mm-hmm. a, a couple of years ago. I was like, they said Pitfall completed. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? That's what? like, no, it doesn't. Bla- it went into a black hole and came out again. You don't. You can't do that. You it can't. Just... You can't finish Pitfall. There's an end. You get the last treasure. Huh. I did not know that. Now Pitfall Two had an end. You right. have uh, Tony the Tiger, and you're. <laughs> You, you, it's Tony the Tiger. They uh-huh. called him something else, like Felix the Feral Cat, but yeah. it's Tony the Tiger. Right. And you're running through there, and you're getting treasures, Wait, and it goes up and down. Wait, they had Pitfall 2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember that at all. They had, there's a bunch of Pitfalls. Yeah. Pitfall 1 and 2 are the only ones that really count. I remember Atari had, uh, you're inside a castle, and you went from room to room. Adventure. Adventure. Yeah, yeah. you had a dragon. You yes, had like a lance. the dragon was like the lumpiest box. Yeah, <laughs> but you're a little <laughs> square. You're, you're absolutely with a, square. With an arrow when you get the yeah. sword or whatever. And you could grab the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And you could carry the bridge all through the castle. Uh-huh. And then if you take it into a... It's like the mystery. Yeah. Which you take the bridge into this room and put it yeah. up to the top. And then that takes you to a, yeah. a secret room that oh, yeah. you can't get through unless you go through the invisible bridge thing or whatever. I, I yeah. remember thinking that was the most badass thing <laughs> of all time. And I completed Adventure. And I remember just standing oh. up. Woo! I'm, oh, I'm yeah. the man! Yeah, yeah. Like, woo! I had uh, Indiana Jones, the Raiders of the Lost Ark game mm-hmm. on 2600. I think that's part of the reason I am the way I am. No, mm-hmm. they didn't have any of the good stuff. It was... Well, it had... It, like, it was like... It had That thing. But yes. it's basically you run around and people do things and you grab this sprite and you put it on this other sprite and it does a thing. I Wait, so so you grab a sprite yes. and you put it on another sprite, on another sprite and it, and it does, did a thing. It literally did a thing. Wow. I've read a walkthrough and I'm like, there's no way anybody could... Uh, figure this out. Uh-huh. Messed me up. 
<laughs> now, did you have the E.T. game? I did, and I liked it. Yeah. I like. Well, I got it at the same time I got the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. So that, I think that's part of the reason why I liked the E.T. game, because yeah. I could actually beat that game. I want to see the documentary. I want to see the documentary about them burying it. I think it they gets a lot of... They a couple of thousand of them out in a landfill. It gets a lot of unwarranted hate. The mm-hmm. worst game on the 2600 back in the day was Pac-Man. The documentaries claim E.T. is what caused the video game crash of 83. I think it was Pac-Man because you had Pac-Man in the arcade. But then when you have it at home, mm-hmm. it was like brown and blue. Yeah. And Pac-Man was this orange thing going, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Bleep, 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 bleep. The maze was different. And yes. And it like played a sound when each stage started that made your dogs sh- <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> they, all of a sudden, a dog would run out and start chasing its tails. Like, oh, it makes that weird. Oh, sound. you're messing with a dog again. And, and you know, there wasn't a lot of streamers back then. That didn't exist. There wasn't media. Right. It was just like articles and stuff. And I remember read a couple of articles and reviews. Eh, people are all a bit miffed that this doesn't look anything like. I know people wanted the arcade game. I know because I was so excited that you could get Pac Man now and play it in your home. Yeah, and I was like, "This ain't Pac Man." No, he was eating like rat turds. He was like, they were like little lines. But and they were, (laughs) I remember because the game when you go to the arcade, Pac Man ate dots. He did. Okay, they're they're, they're dots. Yeah, right. The Atari called them video wafers. No, these were lines. This is back in the eighties. Pac Man was doing some coke. There was this. Kid in my elementary school goes, uh, uh, actually, they're video wafers. Oh, gosh. Like, Chris. Yeah. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't Chris Hughes. It was another Chris. This is elementary yeah. school long yeah. before I met Chris yeah, Hughes. Kids, we had Redditors back shut, before Reddit existed. Shut your mouth and go oh, home. Oh, my God. Actually, they're video but no, wafers. I, didn't, I did not think E.T. was the worst game. I thought it was okay for a 2600 game. It's time now for the Kroger Story of the Week. Libby went grocery shopping last weekend. I always do the shopping, but Libby, who's a sweetheart and I love her to death, she's like, you always go to the store. I'm going to go to the store for you. Uh-huh. I'm going to go to the store this week and, uh-huh. and give you a, a break or whatever, which okay. was sweet. Yeah. Uh, and she comes home, I'm like, did you get a story of the week? Did you talk to anybody? Yeah. No. I'm like, what? That's why you go to That's Kroger. why you go to Kroger. That's so, what you go there for. Anyway, she bought a jar of what's called hoisin sauce. You Just use it bless for- you. Yeah. It's on the same aisle as the soy sauce for if you're having Chinese food yeah, yeah. or uh, stir I'm fry. I'm in that aisle every time. Yeah, I yeah. love that aisle. Okay, so yeah. she bought a bottle of hoisin sauce. It did not make it home. Is it made so, of hoisin berries? I don't know. Okay. I'm not prepared for follow-up questions. <laughs> It didn't make it home. Okay. So we looked all through the car. We looked to see if it had fallen out in the driveway. Couldn't find it. We assumed that it must not have gotten bagged. Yeah. So I went by Kroger, and there is a manager there. His name is Vaughn. Okay. And uh, Vaughn, Vaughn. Vaughn has uh, sunglasses. Uh-huh. Well, he he has the tinted uh, glasses. Okay. And he's seen me. We've talked several times. Uh-huh. And I walked up to him, and I said, um, do you have... Like a place where people buy things and then they accidentally don't bring them back because my wife bought a bottle of this hoisin sauce. I got some off the shelf, yeah, but it didn't make it home. He says, "Was that the only thing that you that you didn't get?" And I said, "Yeah." He goes, ah, "Just we're good. Take it." And he says, I, "I believe you." He says, "It happens all the time." He says, "People will buy things and they either leave them in the cart or whatever." Uh-huh. And so he says, "Yeah, we're good. Okay, because he trusts me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. So Vaughn, thank you. You yeah, get the that's customer service. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, award of the week. This has been the Kroger story of the week. And there's an update on TJ Maxx. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, the the nasty the yeah, stinky the, pants. The stinky pants at TJ Maxx. Yeah. My mom went back to TJ Maxx. Uh-huh. She had found her receipt. Yeah. They gave her her money back for the pants. Nice. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but they did give her her okay. money back. Yeah. Okay. So, that's awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> A, a, a nice ending it, to the story. It could have been smoother. Yeah. Still, they refunded her money. Oh, so, that's awesome. So, there you go. Okay, so the announcement that I want to make here. Mike has an announcement. I want to, we, Darren and I are talking about a new project, mm-hmm. a, a new show, uh, a different style than what we're doing now. It's going to be based around people on the verge of making a major decision. Mm-hmm. And I just to give you a flavor of it, one of the early episodes we're talking about, I have a friend of mine that spent a large amount of money mm-hmm. on a broken guitar. Yeah. Uh, but what, how it became broken yep. and the story behind it, it means yep. a lot to him. Yep. But really what it came down to, one way of looking at it is I'm spending thousands of dollars on a 
smashed guitar, mm-hmm. should I do it? And my advice was, yes, you absolutely should. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I agreed with yeah, you. Yeah. So the new project is we want to want to find those stories, find people that are about to make those decisions, mm-hmm. hopefully talk to them before they do it, yeah, and then get recaps. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like. It's not going to be like a weekly thing. This will be. It's going to take a lot of work to do. Right. So what you can do, listening to this, mm-hmm. if you are on the verge of a, a major decision or something like that, let us know. An investment. Us. You're looking yeah. to take another investment. job. Uh, I've, I've always wanted to take this. We're looking for stuff like I've always wanted to fly to Australia, but that's stupid expensive. And I don't know if I should do it. Talk to us. Possible ideas for this are called, you know, F it or just buy, buy the tickets. Make up your mind. Make up your mind, whatever. Yeah. We want to be a part of that. With and, Mike and Darren. And we want to talk about, you know, the aftermath with you. Mm-hmm. Was it the right decision? All those type of things. Because and, if and there's one thing Mike and I are good at, we're great that's at making decisions. Got, well, we have talked about this on prior podcasts. I've talked about wanting to be a concert concierge. Yes. Uh, the same friend neglected to go to a Rush concert with me. Yeah. Then Neil Peart died. It ended up being their last show. Yep. That was almost 10 years ago. That was their last tour. Their last, yeah, their last tour. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. That was almost 10 years ago. We still talk about it. <laughs> we still, a couple of beers in, and be like, yep. I can't believe I didn't go to that show. Yeah, I got you, a buddy. You should have driven to me and dragged me to the show. I got a friend who still apologizes that he didn't go see Johnny Cash. Yeah. With me. Yeah. I didn't go because I wasn't going to drive to Knoxville all by myself. Yeah. So these and, are the uh, kind of stories. Yeah. yeah. If you have the story, if you know someone has a story, get in contact with us. By now, you should know how to get in contact with us. Yep. Follow us on Facebook. You can message us there. Go to irritabledadsyndrome.com. Mm-hmm. You can message us there. There's an email there. Uh, just send us your stories. Yep. And uh, we're, we're looking for um, stories for our first few episodes. Yeah. 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 Very good. Mike. Yeah. All Thank right. you. Yeah. I, I didn't even plan <laughs> that out. No, you didn't. Guys, we are going to go. We want you to go to irritabledadcenter.com and uh, you can listen to every episode we have. If you want to join Patreon, you can do that. And uh, You can uh, hover over items in the store, pretend you're going to buy it, get me excited, and then not and, and buy then, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you could buy it. You could buy it. Would it kill you to buy a damn shirt? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. They're funny. <laughs> People will talk to you about our shirt. That's right. That's they, a guarantee that we will make to you. Yep. People will ask you about it. They will. You will be the envy of all your loser friends. If you're a shut-in <laughs> and you're like, how do I meet people? Buy one of our shirts yeah. and walk outside. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're going to go. We hope to see you next week on Irritable Dad Syndrome. Irritable Dad Syndrome is a Mike Odell, Darren Cox production. <laughs> Stump Woodley said I'll be watching Heat of the Night reruns here pretty soon because <laughs> I'm so old. Yeah. Yeah. Carol O'Connor. He's a good actor. I always got into a fun the... fact. He was also on a little show called All in the Family. Yeah. He was on a comedy. What you're saying is we're hacks. Not intentional. Unintentional hacks. I, exactly. I didn't mean to. Hmm. You know what I heard? What? I heard that you two sucked compared to fish. They do. The sphere. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> I don't know what happened to the rundown. <laughs> I know what happened. The rundown's sitting right there. We haven't gotten to it yet.